We're back again today to talk about accounting for special purpose entities. Let's get to it. Special purpose entities, or SPEs, are structured entities designed to carry out a very specific activity. For example, an SPE might hold a plant that it leases back to the parent company. It might hold accounts receivable of the parent company, in which case the activity is to collect the receivables themselves. Or it may conduct research and development activities on behalf of parent company. Whatever is special purpose, it's structured this way as a means of attracting lower cost sources of financing. A lender may not be as interested in financing a manufacturing facility within the parent company where its security is subject to all sorts of other operational risks. However, with the plant now segregated into a separate entity and where the parent corporation makes certain assurances to cover any shortfalls in the financing repayment, the lender is more willing to extend cheaper financing at a higher loan to value ratio. The special purpose entity is structured unlike typical businesses. The asset may be rolled in from the parent or may be purchased or constructed directly by the SBE. The capitalization of the SBE is characterized by high financial leverage or said another way with a lot of debt. The more the merrier because it lowers the cost of capital. To be a separate entity however there needs to be separate ownership interests. But these are not typically held by the parent company in this circumstance. Often, it is new equity investors. But the terms of their equity investment are such that they really don't behave like owners. In fact, often their equity investment earns a fixed rate of return, which more like a mezzanine financing than pure equity. To get the financing from the lenders in the first place, parent corporation is going to have to stand behind the obligations of special purpose company. For this reason, parent corporation is said to have a variable interest in special purpose company. Parent corporation in effect becomes the primary beneficiary when as a result of this variable interest, parent corporation participates in the good or the bad results of the special purpose company. Keep in mind that the lender's rate of return is fixed as is the so-called equity holders, so the residual often falls to the primary beneficiary, in this case, parent corporation. But with the opportunity to win comes the opportunity to also lose. Now, parent corporation might be called upon to backstop the obligations of special purpose company, as we've said. In the case of our plant, they may provide a guarantee or a guarantee of residual value of the plant, if the special purpose entity is holding receivables, they may guarantee the value of the receivables or take back the uncollectible receivables back onto the books of parent corporation. Given the exposure of parent corporation to the activities of the special purpose company, it's not uncommon for the legal equity owners of special purpose company to stand aside and allow the primary beneficiary to exercise control. So what we have in substance is that special purpose company is really an extension of parent corporation and as such should be consolidated just like any other subsidiary, at least in principle. So this means bringing all the revenues, expenses, assets and liabilities back onto the consolidated books. The net effect to the bottom line might be negligible if all goes as planned. But as experience has shown in the case of Enron and later Bear Stern, when things go wrong, it can be catastrophic for the parent to meet the obligations of the special purpose entity. So, when parent corporation goes to consolidate special purpose company, the so-called equity interest in special purpose company get reclassified as non-controlling interest in the consolidated financial statements. The bubble now includes the special purpose company. So all intercompany transactions get eliminated in the same way as we have previously learned. However, at the date of initiation, the calculation of the opening balance sheet is somewhat different than what we have learned from typical business combinations. The implied value for 100% of special purpose corporation is determined as the sum of the consideration paid by the primary beneficiary 
which in our case is parent corporation, plus the fair value of the non-controlling interest in the variable interest entity, which in our case is the value of the common shares in special purpose company. We compare this implied value with the value of the consideration received by the special purpose company, called the assessed value, which is the sum of the carrying value of the amount invested by the primary beneficiary or parent corporation, plus the fair value of the variable interest entity's own net assets, excluding goodwill prior to the investment by the primary beneficiary. Note that our fair value increments are inherent in this line. So for instance, any differences between book value and fair value of capital assets and tangibles and long-term debt. When the implied value is less than the value of the consideration received, we have negative goodwill, which gets recorded as a gain. When the implied value is greater than the value of the consideration received, we have goodwill. The fair value increments will be amortized in the same way as we have previously learned. Do we need an example to make this a little more clear? You're damn right we do. So in this example, what we're going to assume is that uh, Pico has outsourced all of its R&D activity to special purpose company. And for that, uh, Pico has agreed to guarantee the debts of special purpose company. Special purpose company shareholders, which are different than Pico, are to receive a guaranteed rate of return. Parent corporation will earn all the residual profits in special purpose company. Special purpose company's fair value increments as of January 1st, year one, related to capital assets, intangibles, and, and long-term debt. And what is required of us is to prepare the consolidated balance sheet as at January 1st, year one, assuming the fair value of the common shares in special purpose corporations are $15 million, $25 million, and $30 million. So we will return to this calculation that we just discussed here and try to apply that to this situation. So here, I've transposed the information from the slide we just discussed. The three scenarios that we're going to look at is when we have the fair value of common shares is 15, 25, and $30 million. The fair value investment by PICO is nil. So the sum of these two is just the amount of the common shares held by the non-controlling interest. Once again, the amount invested by PICO is nil. All they're doing is guaranteeing the debts of special purpose company. The fair value of special purpose company's assets is equal to their book value, which we can get from their balance sheet of $150,000, plus the fair value increments that they're worth over and above the book value at this date. The fair value of the liabilities is equal to the book value of the current liabilities plus the book value of the long-term debt plus the fair value increment on the long-term debt, giving us an assessed value of Special Purpose Corporation of $25. The difference between the implied value and the assessed value in each of our three cases is a negative $10 differential, which in the case of the $15 value of the non-controlling interest gets recognized as a gain on the purchase. In the case where we had no differential, there's neither goodwill nor a gain on purchase to recognize. And finally, in the case where the equity interests of special purpose company were recognized as a fair value of $30 million, the difference between the implied value and the assessed value of $5 million gets allocated to goodwill. So that's step one of preparing our consolidated balance sheet. Now we have to return to the balance sheets and prepare the consolidation adjustments. To start out with, we can simply prepare a combined statement of both PICO and a special purpose company. So now let's prepare our consolidation entry. We know that in the first case, we've been asked to look at the non-controlling interest when it has a fair value of $15 million. We need to adjust the capital assets to reflect the fair value increment of $10 million. We need to adjust the intangible assets to reflect the fair value increment of $50 million. And we need to reflect the $5 million increment on the long-term debt. We need to eliminate the $1 million of common shares in special purpose company, which is being replaced by the $15 million valuation that was attributed to those shares. 
Plus, we need to eliminate the retained earnings of Special Purpose Company, which means that we're now just $10 million off. And that $10 million refers to the difference that we recorded down below as an acquisition gain. So that would mean we'd need to adjust our retained earnings by $10 million. And now we have our parent corporation consolidated balance sheet. Let's change the circumstances to look at the other two scenarios. We are asked to look at the common shares in Special Purpose Corporation as if their fair value was $25 million, not 15. And in this case, we still have the same fair value increments of 10, 50, and 5 respectively. The common shares still get eliminated. However, we need to get rid of the $10 million gain as that pertained to the $15 million valuation. So in that case, our consolidated balance sheet would look as so. And finally, in our third case, where the common shares in SPC were determined to have a fair value of $30 million, we now recognize that there was goodwill on the transaction of $5 million that needs to be recognized. And once again, here is your consolidated balance sheet. So there you can see a lot of the principles that we've talked about in consolidation uh, apply when we have a special purpose entity. And the only nuance for special purpose entities is how we calculate the goodwill or the gain on purchase. That's enough for now. So, don't stop till you get to the top. When you get to the top, don't stop.